What is up, everybody? This is your boy. We're here with another guide, a jam-packed guide for Saint Achievement and the Census Taker Achievement in Dead Rising. I know I said that that was going to be my last guide, but you know what? It's whatever. We're going to do another one because I've always wanted to do the Saint Achievement and Census Taker Achievements in one. This is a very packed guide, so we're going to be doing a lot in just the 34 minutes, covering a lot in the 34 minutes that this guide runs. So we're going to be doing very fast. If you need any extra help, look in the description. I will put a rough uh guide in there too as well just so that you can see where the survivor start times are anyway starting off after the intro sequence do that one really fast come up to the rooftop go through the vent and go get jeff and natalie very easy no zombies in your way you just go and get jeff and natalie the hardest part the longest part is just trying to get jeff to freaking talk to you because sometimes he will sit there and stare off into space like he's looking at a beautiful woman but anyway go ahead and grab jeff And then, once you grab Jeff, you're going to bring him around the building and grab Natalie. Now, if you don't have the PP sticker achievements for the photos, uh, go ahead and take a picture of them when they're hugging. It'll give you like 3,000. That's enough for at least one of them, maybe both. And then you're going to go ahead and put them in the safe room. And you're going to come out and continue with case one. Head to the food court and take on Carlito using the SMG that's on top of the uh, front sign for the Italian place. And then you're going to sneak around back, quarter him if you have at least five health blocks. You can straight confront him and he cannot kill you. You can only you can kill him because he cannot kill, hurt you fast enough. So once you need to do that, we're going to need to go get Bill. So uh, you're going to need to grab food first. So grab food while you're in the food court and then finish up case one. After you talk with Barnaby, go ahead and head up the escalator and go to in the closet. In the back, you will see Bill. He's behind some boxes and you will go ahead and go through his. Um, I will not be showing the small survivors like one survivor, but a big group. I will show you guys uh, a little bit more on big groups because they're a little bit harder to tr uh, travel with because you have to, there's so much to pay attention to. But anyway, once you talk to Bill and get him on your side, you're going to go ahead and go save an Alfresca. Take him through. Alfresca is always going to be the hardest one because they're shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder zombies most of the way. But that's why I always emphasize saving. But anyway, you're going to go ahead and bring him back to the safe room after you save because saving is very important and will save you a lot of pain later on. Anyway, once you get to the vent, you are going to go ahead and climb up on top of here. And you're going to take a picture of the vent so that you can use it for Jonathan, Alyssa, and Brett later on in the game. And then you're going to want to wait anywhere besides Alfresca Plaza. Between 4 and 5, do not enter Alfresca. Wait until you get a Mother's Lament and head over to uh, the garment store, or Weber's Garments, I believe. And grab Bert and Aaron. You have to punch Bert a little bit, and then Aaron and them will join. Go across the street and grab Leah. And to get Leah, if you put a marker down, which is holding right trigger and uh, pressing Y, it'll put a marker down. And if you have that, you have to call them to call them to you in order to get Leah over that counter. But that's going to create a lot of issues. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring them, o bring Leah over to the door, put a marker on the door, come over and save Bert and Aaron, who have most likely just ran into a large group of zombies because that's just what they do. It's what they've always done. Use markers frequently to travel. Because they will save your life. But anyway, uh, now that we're bringing Aaron back, this is why I say bring food all the time because that was a close call. If he got hit one more time, you'd have been dead. Wait until 6 o'clock and go out into Leisure Park. 6 o'clock, you'll have the convict spawn with Sophie. You're going to want to grab Sophie. Sophie is very simple. Grab it. I will show you how to take care of the convicts. They are a very easy group. Unfortunately, they are buggy to heck, so they're easy. So once you grab Sophie... You're just going to travel. If they're off in some other spot, don't even confront them. But if they're like here, like, you know, they're right in front of me. I can't do anything about it. Go ahead and hide behind a tree and just kind of take out the gunner. You can do that without him hitting you. Once you take him out, you're going to want to go up to the back of the vehicle and grab the machine gun off the back. And then just take out the rest of them using that. It'll, it's super quick. And then you're going to come over to the Paradise Plaza entrance and leisure and put a marker down. Um, you will not have to enter Leisure Park after this. Once when, uh, you get the shortcut, it'll be, make it a heck of a lot easier. But anyway, use markers to always, like I said before, use markers. Travel with them. Keep them protected. Keep food on you at all times. Make sure that you know where your cutscenes are. Like, that was a 7 o'clock cutscene for the first night when their eyes turn red. And then go ahead and bring them up and rescue them too. You're going to go ahead and add the four survivors to your survivor lips. So now we have seven total survivors saved. Wait anywhere besides Wonderland and North Plaza until 11 p.m. The reason why is because uh, you have you and Shin Shinji and Greg from 9 to 10. And then at 11 p.m. you have David and North Plaza. That's our next group. It's those four survivors. 
Anyway, once when you get the call for Shadow in the North Plaza, this is going to be for David. You're going to go ahead and go in from Leisure Park into North Plaza, up the stairs into there. Never use Wonderland because Wonderland is a no-no because you have other survivors there. You don't want to trigger them. They will start degrading their health on you and you won't, and there's a chance they might die if you're taking too long. But anyway, go ahead and uh, follow Shadow of the North Plaza to David. Uh, you can set markers by pressing the left D-pad. He's another carrying survivor. They're a little bit more of a pain in the ass to deal with. I mean, granted, they're easy to travel with, but trying to keep a large group with a carrying survivor or a survivor you need to help is much harder. Anyway, bring them over to the Wonderland entrance. Doesn't matter which one you go to. Just go to the Sinister Reed where you will see Shinji and you. I actually recommend not even uh, grabbing Shinji and you just yet. But if you do, grab the Japanese conversationalist book and go ahead and talk to you or uh, Shinji. It doesn't matter which one. Just talk to one of them. Uh, get them on your side and go ahead and place up, keep them at the marker in the bookstore. It's about the safest place for them. It keeps it close so when a cutscene triggers, they don't come running out into a group of zombies. Because remember, every cutscene that triggers will remove the marker. So you'll have to reset it. So that, that I'll work around it if you need to. You can adjust the guide to how you want to run it. But uh, this is just a rough on how to get, you know, at least 50 survivors out of them all. Anyway, come over and fight Adam. Adam is a pretty simple survivor. But first, we need to take care of you, Shinji, and uh, David. Because they are on our, their way to us right now. Go ahead and place the marker down. But don't get killed by Adam because it's super easy to get killed by Adam right there. Especially when you're trying to protect you and Shinji. Because they are probably the dumbest survivors of the bunch. One of the dumbest besides... Uh, Rich and Josh. But anyway, uh, to take on Adam without the without a noob weapon like the Mega Buster, you're going to go ahead and get him while he's hitting the balloons. Uh, wait for him to blow up the balloon, and as soon as he releases it, pop it. It'll make him cough on it, and then you can deal some damage. Always have an SMG on you. I always highly recommend an SMG. It does a lot of damage. Pistols do too, but SMGs are much quicker. Anyway, after you're done with him, go ahead and grab... Or, uh, Grab the chainsaw off the floor there and then go ahead and get David you and Shinji Which they might actually you know what now that I think of it don't get them just yet stop The ride stop the ride that that is a good safe bet stop the ride Don't grab Greg come over and get you and Shinji and David bring them to the bathroom that way when you're traveling with Greg you don't have to worry about keeping them safe they're already there so go ahead and bring David I always drop off the baggage which David is baggage unfortunately because of his disability and we're gonna go ahead and grab you and Shinji now remember with these types of survivors they're a little bit more ballsy than the other ones they will jump and attack any survivor any zombies in the vicinity so it's almost best that you Go ahead and try to take out most of the zombies in their way because they will literally go out of their way to punch a zombie that will never would never have bothered them. Or they'll just stop because, you know, you'll get... Your dude will stop panic in front of a zombie, so they'll stop too. But anyway, or if you get grabbed, they will freak out too. But anyway, once you get them in the bathroom, you're going to go out and grab Greg. He is going to take you to the shortcut. This shortcut will be a lifesaver. Make sure to grab that chainsaw off the ground if you haven't already. That chainsaw is probably one of the most important things in this game. You are going to want to have the chainsaw. Trust me, it is a lifesaver. But anyway, once you bring Greg all the way over, you're going to go ahead and bring him all the way to the bathroom. You have to stay pretty close to him because if you're not like literally shackled to him like his, like you're his freaking prisoner, uh, he will try to sit there and go, Frank, I can't get to you. You know, you're right in front of me and I can see you, you know. Instead, you have to be, like, literally touching his butt. But anyway, before you go through the shortcut, you're going to want to come up and grab the Criminal Biography book from Sinister Reed. This book is the most important book because it will increase the life of your chainsaw. And then you're going to come over to the shortcut and you're going to go to Paradise Plaza. Keep them in the safe room or in the bathroom here. You're going to come out to this first bookstore and you're going to grab the two extra books you need for the chainsaw, which is Entertainment and... Uh, God, what was the other one? I always forget the other one, but they're both in there. Just look at the thing. I'll also have it in the description. It's entertainment and, uh, I think something for, uh, hardware. I don't remember which one. But anyway, 
now that we got the chainsaw all beefed up, we can take out a lot of zombies in a get-go. Careful, survivors will get stuck on shit. If survivors look like they'll get stuck, they will get stuck. That's the way this game is. If there's a large group of zombies on one side of the room and no zombies on the other, they will always run into the zombies. And also, they will always try to either cry or punch a zombie. I, it, it depends on the survivor. But anyway, once you get them in the safe room, our next one is Barnaby. This is case two. You're going to want to do this fast. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up, avoid his shots. It's very simple to do. Not too hard. And then you're going to come up, and if you get close enough to him, he won't try to shoot you. And you're just going to chainsaw his ass because the chainsaw is super powerful. Take him out in a few hits. Go ahead, and when it, you get medicine run, we're going to go ahead and run straight to go get the medicine. This is our fight with Steven, and uh, take care of Steven. If you can do this fast enough, you can get done with this before you even get the call for Tanya and Ross, which is our next survivors. Uh, but anyway, once when you get over to um, here, you're going to go ahead and take on Steven. Steven, just use one of these pillars in the aisle to move around and take him out with the chainsaw. And remember, we got Barnaby. Barnaby is now a part of our survivor list. So that's why I bumped that up when Barnaby was there. But anyway, uh, once you get the first aid kit, remember to get the first aid kit. It's very important. I know we're a little bit late on that because it already was shown. This is moving super quick, so I'm going to be a little behind. But anyway, now we're going to wait around until 7 a.m. Right next to the Wonderland Plaza. This is where we're going to get... Tanya and Ross and once you get Tanya and Ross you're gonna want to go straight now you want to do this quickly because remember we have medicine run remember not to give Ross the handgun please don't give him the handgun anyway run over to running like the wind it's the shoe store in Wonderland on the upper floor and Tanya and Ross are in the back over here do not give Ross a gun when he asks for it just keep talking to them eventually they'll join you and you'll have to carry Ross Tanya's pretty easy to travel with, too, so this one's not too hard. Go ahead and uh, bring them to the shortcut and take them back and finish up Medicine Run. Remember to give them... Uh, make sure to give the medicine over to Jesse. But anyway, you're going to get a call here for Hatchet Man. Hatchet Man is a pretty difficult survivor group because you have to get it with Pamela and Heather. Uh, but as soon as seven starts remember to get Tanya and Ross and then just bring them back to the safe room um, You're gonna go ahead and go into Paradise Plaza here, and you're gonna go and bring them back And after you bring them back you're gonna want to go up to the thing here and go ahead and complete the escort and Give the medicine to Jesse. I said that three times already and I'll say it again bring, Give the medicine to Jesse. You do not want to miss this. This is very important and this will kill Brad and a bunch of other crap, and you don't want to do that. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to North Plaza, where we're going to go ahead and camp here until 9. Where you'll get a call for the coward. He's in Alfresca. Um, and you're going to come out to Chris, Chris Lips. Chris Lips is on the other side by the Leisure Park entrance. And when you get in there, you're going to fight Cliff. Be careful of his backstab move. It does a lot of damage. However, your chainsaw does a lot of damage, too. Shouldn't take it too long. There's a backstab move. Just like I said, be careful of it. But anyway, once you get him done, or once you kill him, you're going to grab the key, and you're going to come over to this empty store over here where you'll find Josh, Richard, and Barbara. Richard and Josh are probably two of the dumbest survivors you will transport in this run. Once you grab them, you will go ahead and take them all the way back to the safe room. But before you do, make sure do not, please do not enter paradise until 9 o'clock when Heather and Pamela spawn. Go ahead, enter, and go and save Pamela and Heather. Try to put them in a safe spot. I would recommend the music store or on that bridge. But you're going to have to go ahead and take clear the zombies out from Pamela. Otherwise, she'll get mauled. However, I was having issues very early on with Rich here. <laughs> As you can tell, Rich was getting mauled to death. But anyway, go ahead and move Josh over and... Uh, this is actually, I think, where I killed Rich on accident. The chainsaw is a very deadly weapon. Please be careful hitting zombies around. Use your jump kick more if you have it. Um, but here I was having a hard time balancing Pamela and Rich both being mauled by zombies. On It was a pretty considerable spot or distance between them. And careful of this uh, little creek thing that's here. It is a death trap. If your survivors get down there, they'll have a harder time getting back up. Rich is almost dead here. We're going to try to rescue him. Unfortunately, it's going to be 
Uh, it's not going to work because Rich just dies because, you know, he gets hit by a chainsaw to the face. And you'll see that here in a second. This is why I always emphasize saving. I cannot emphasize saving enough. I cannot stress it enough. I don't even know how many times I can say this in this game. But that is the reason why. Because the first thing I had to do was go to return the title menu. Now granted I could use them as a freebie, but I wasn't going to. Taking them out fast, use a queen. A queen is the answer to all your problems when you're dealing with large groups of zombies around your survivors. Because it will literally wipe out the entire vicinity, giving them some time to get into a safe spot so you can heal them. Once you get <laughs> Pamela, or is that Pamela or Heather? I don't remember. Heather's up here. There's Heather. Once you get Pamela out from the group, you're going to talk to Heather. Heather's safe. Don't talk to Heather first because Pamela might die in the process. Once you get them, go ahead and take them back to the safe room. You are done with these survivors. And we're going to move on to our next two survivors, which is uh, the Coward, which is uh, Gordon, which I'm surprised I even remember his name, and Ronald. Now, you're going to want to go ahead and do this case first. It's uh, the Frosted Fat Past at 11, I want to say it starts. You get Ronald's call to around 11. I don't remember if it's uh, Professor's Pass is at 10, 10, 30, or 11, but whenever that runs. Anyway, upon entering the Alfresca Plaza, or if you're here before 11 a.m., you'll get the call for uh, Ronald's for uh, the Ronald's case. I don't remember which one it is, like Ron not Ronald's appetite, it's the it's actual uh, case. So anyway, you're going to go ahead and grab the coward from the hardware store. He's in the back. It's Gordon. You'll have to hit him a few times to get him to actually want to follow you. And once he wants to follow you, you'll want to take him out and go get Ronald. You want to get this all done before 1 p.m. for sure. Actually, you want to be in Wonderland by 1 p.m. Um, so what you're going to do is come out to Jill's Sandwich Shop in Paradise at once you get Gordon to Paradise. And you're going to grab Ronald. Ronald, uh, you'll need some food for him, so make sure to have food on you when you enter this area. If not, you can just hit some trash cans. Eventually, you'll find a snack somewhere. And once you find the snack, you're going to want to actually come back to Ronald. Go ahead and give it to him. Uh, we haven't found it yet. Or maybe we have. Here we have. All right. So we're going to give Ronald the food. He'll follow you. And then at noon, once you get a call for Above the Law, you're going to want to enter Wonderland Plaza. Um, and wait until 1 p.m. Wait until 1 p.m. to activate Above the Law. Because that will spawn Sally and Nick. But you want to be out of Paradise before 1 p.m. Because Jennifer will spawn along with the Rainbow Colt. But anyway, take care of Joe. Joe's pretty easy to take care of with the chainsaw. Just be careful of her slam attack. It will disorient you. And then you're going to want to get Kay, Lily, Janet, Kelly, and Michelle. This is a pretty large group of survivors. You're going to be saving here about seven. Um, so once, once you're done with that, you're going to have Nick and Sally hanging from the bunny. Right next to the staircase there. And you're going to want to clear out the pathway. Easiest way is with queens. But if you don't have a queen, just go ahead and use a chainsaw. It'll work too. Grab Nick and Sally. And right after you get done with them, you're going to actually want to uh, go ahead and move all the survivors to the bathroom. And it should uh, be ready for Jennifer at 1, 1 p.m. But anyway, uh, you're going to want to do the same thing for Sally. Both sides, they're both hanging on bunnies. However they got up there, no one knows. But anyway, go ahead and guide them back to the safe room now that you have the six survivors. And you need to grab Jennifer in Paradise. Uh, make sure to save right here. It's very important that you save because if you get kidnapped by the rank of cult, you're going to want to quit and come back in. And so anyway, once you use the shortcut here, you're going to go ahead and take on the rank of cult. But um, make sure to put a marker down to keep them from coming to you because you don't want to have to be dealing with them and keeping your survivors alive at the same time. Jennifer's pretty easy to grab, so you're going to want to just grab Jennifer as soon as you can. But first, we're going to bring the survivors to the... Um, bookstore over there just keep them close to the next checkpoint because Jennifer's safe as she's in a box in the, the ring of Colt's not gonna sacrifice her because they're too busy trying to kill you or find or wait for you to come to them because they're lazy and you're gonna want to go ahead and take care of the ring of Colt. and you want to do this fast because you do have another case here in a second which is uh, the one for another source I believe there's another source and then once you grab Jennifer, you can go and hold her hand. It'll make it easier. However, holding hands not as effective as picking them up. But hold her hand, bring her to the safe room, bring your other survivors over, and go ahead and return them to the security room and save them. That will add seven more survivors to your account. And then from here, we can go ahead and activate. All right, so now that you've... Uh, 
brought the biggest group back. That is the largest group you're going to have. You're going to want to come out and do girl hunting. This is uh, case four. This is, you're almost done, by the way. You are almost done. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go ahead and take care of her. She's kind of an ass to take care of because she's on a bike. But once you get her stuck somewhere like in this corner over here, you can smack her a few times with the chainsaw and she's done. But anyway, go ahead and wait anywhere besides Entrance Plaza until 5 p.m. And go ahead and enter Entrance Plaza. You're going to go after Jolie, Rachel, Floyd, and Wayne. Um, you're going to be taking, you're going to have to take care of uh, the Hall family right off the bat though. So uh, if you go up to them, they won't be able to shoot you. Although careful of the other two because they will be able to. Just take them care of the chainsaw. It's all right. So now that you're done with Roger, you're gonna come over to Ned's Nick Knacker and grab Floyd. He is. It'll take you a while to get through his freaking conversation. So I just cut through it. Go ahead and grab Floyd, and you're gonna want to bring him over to Estelle's Fine Lady Cosmetics. This is uh, the meeting spot since Wayne is there, and that's actually the last one I'm gonna grab because I'm gonna go grab Jolie first and then Rachel. So you're gonna wanna come down to Grandma's Kids down the stairs here. This is where Jolie is. You have to get Jolie before you get Rachel because Rachel will not even talk to you until you have Jolie in the room with her. So you're gonna wanna come out talk to Jolie and she won't come with you at first, but when you leave, she'll join you. And then you're gonna want to actually bring her with you. This is the downside because you're gonna have to remove the marker because she won't come with you if there's a marker there. So go ahead and remove the marker and come over to Lady Space up the stairs and just go past in the closet there where you got Bill. A couple stores past it, you'll see Rachel get Jolie over there. And uh, Joel, or Rachel's one of those weird finicky survivors, but luckily you don't have to take her too far or through too many zombies. So with her even crawling around, you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, go ahead and grab Jolie and Rachel and you're going to want to bring them over to Estelle's Fine Lady Cosmetics along with Wayne and grab Wayne. This is going to be one of the last larger groups you have two more after this one but anyway go grab Wayne and once you grab Wayne you can go ahead and bring them all back to the safe room it's a pretty easy path from here because it's literally just right outside that thing is paradise and then you just go right into the door so you're gonna get a call for Ronald's uh, appetite so don't enter until um, I think it's around like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. I think it's 6 p.m. yeah at 6 p.m. you'll get a call for Ronald's appetite you're gonna need to bring him more food I know you just took care of that, but he is a big boy and he needs his food. So you're going to want to go ahead and grab as much food from uh, Paradise as much as you can and go ahead and return them to the safe room. Talk to Ronald and go ahead and give him a thing of OJ or really any food. It could literally be an apple as long as it's food. All right. So now that you got that taken care of, if you don't take care of that, he will leave with a considerable amount of survivors. So take care of it. Uh, anyway, go ahead and, and now your next one, you're going to have a bit of a wait here until about 12 a.m. So you're going to have about six hours to do whatever the hell you want. But make sure you're in this empty store where you're meeting Isabella. Just follow the marker uh, for Isabella's case and you're going to come out to this empty store and just wait here until midnight. Once you take care of everything and you get her safe, you're going to want to come out here and grab Kindle. He is out here with a shotgun and I highly recommend, highly recommend not letting them keep their shotgun they will shoot everybody they will literally shoot you they will shoot everybody they will shoot everything so get rid of um his shotgun this is another survivor with another mutiny that you have to take care of and so you're gonna come in here and grab isabella she is key for another survivor at the end of the game or at the end of the run simone you'll need isabella for and this is your final mission so congrats you are almost done with the cases Go ahead and bring them through. This is going to be a pretty easy path. Kindle's pretty good to run with. He's pretty evasive. Bring him back to the safe room and go ahead and bring them back. This is where you are done with cases. Now, if you do happen to go one over, which is what I do, uh, it's whatever. But anyway, um, go ahead and head out to Colby's after you're done transporting Isabella and Kindle there. And you're going to go to Theater 4. if you, Because since you've taken care of Jennifer, you now can fight Sean and get the other survivors associated with him. Um, once you fight Sean, he's pretty easy to kill with the chainsaw. There's going to be a book there. A pink book by his altar. Go ahead and grab that pink book. It, it'll help. Not by much, but it'll help. Go ahead and save. You're going to need to save uh, Ray, Nathan, Michelle, Beth, and Cheryl. And Cheryl is actually behind the store. So go ahead and open that door, smack her in the face, and grab Cheryl. She is, um, she'll give you another case. It's not important. You don't need to worry about it. So don't worry about that. 
Uh, go ahead and run up here and grab Nathan, and we're going to go ahead and transport them back. I will show most of the travel here because they are, in my opinion, the, one, the hardest groups of the survivors to transport because of the fact that uh, this is when, survivor, when zombies are most aggressive. And also, you have to do it... Uh, Try to get it done before the case starts. That way you can get them back to the safe room and not trigger this uh, event. Although I might have done that on my own. Um, go ahead and bring them back. Make sure to save again. Just because you don't want to have to redo all that. And once you save, this is a good spot to uh, bring them back to the safe room and get them back. You're going to want to actually get them back before 1 a.m. if you can possibly help it. However, that's not always possible. So if you get done at two, it's whatever. Uh, you'll still have the other three spawn because this group is only four. Remember, you can only have eight survivors active at one time, regardless if they're following you or not. If it's a case, you need. That's why it, we're doing it in the way that we're doing it to avoid that, so that we don't all, so we don't get any extra ones. Because unfortunately, we do have more survivors coming up here at one a.m. and two a.m. One a.m. is three survivors, and the other one. At 2 a.m. if uh, you don't have these survivors in by 2 a.m. Gil will not spawn until you do. So go ahead and bring them over around. This is actually probably the safest pathway for them. Just bring them around this arc here. It'll keep them pretty clear of the larger groups of zombies. The ones that actually take care of you. But you do got to be careful of queens. They will spawn those uh, glowing parasites which do attack you. So go ahead and bring them over to the safe room. Once you get them to the door, it's pretty easy going from there because the next big one is at uh, 8 a.m. on day three. So once you bring them over to the safe room, our next survivor here is going to be uh, Brett, Jonathan, Alyssa, and Gil. You won't get calls for them. So... They are actually hidden survivors that will come in at 1 and 2. So about 1 o'clock. As soon as you're done with that, you can go ahead. I went one case too far and Barnaby died. So that, that was a reduction of survivors. But it doesn't matter because we're still going to have one extra survivor at the end of this. When you're done with that, you're going to come out to North Plaza, go to the gun store. And there's going to be three survivors in there. Run in there, let them start shooting at you, and get the hell out of there. This is where the picture of the vent that we took earlier is going to come in handy because you're going to show it to Jonathan and these, this is how you're actually going to save these three people. Um, remember, they all have guns, so get rid of their guns when you do rescue them because you don't want them shooting everything. Um, they're pretty easy to take care of. However, getting them to the food court, which is our next stop because at 2 a.m. Gil will spawn and we'll want to take care of Gil too. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come out of the North Plaza after you show them the picture and Brett, Alyssa, and Jonathan will go ahead and start following you. Bring them over to through uh, Wonderland Plaza and to Gil and the food court. But you're going to get a call for another mission. It's just another side mission. Don't worry about it. Um, but once you get in the food court, you're going to come over to that Italian place where you got the SMG to fight Carlito. And Gil will be inside the kiosk here. And you're going to go ahead and grab Gil. You will have to leave after talking to him. And he will start yelling at you. So talk to him for a little bit. Once he stops talking to you, leave the area. Or like, you know, go down the stairs there. And I hit him a few times. But be careful doing that because you might trigger him. But if you, when you get down, he'll start talking to you. Be like, hey, you know, are you being serious? And then so you'll go ahead and grab Gil and bring him back to the safe room with you. So this group of survivors are now done. You've gotten all the survivors you need to bring with you. Go ahead and bring them through Leisure Park where you'll most likely be ass assaulted by the convicts again. Same thing. Go ahead and take care of the gunner. So that's what we'll just do. And we'll grab the gun and take care of the other guys. So now once you're done taking care of the convicts there, you're going to bring them back to the safe room. It's a pretty easy walk. The, survivor, or the zombie account has gone down. And you should be able to get them through Paradise without them dying. Now, unfortunately, I think there's... Oh, yeah, Gil needs help because he's drunk. But anyway, bring him out to the elevator, and you're going to go ahead and bring him back to the safe room where you will run and save them. That is 42 survivors out of 50. Now you're going to come to, at 8 a.m., you're going to come to uh, Wonderland. Stay out of Wonderland between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. So once an 8 a.m. hits, you're going to come out and get Susan. 
clear the zombies around her and grab Susan. And you're going to bring her to Paul's fight. Paul's fight's pretty easy. All you have to do is smack him with the chainsaw a few times. Uh, if he dies, it's no big issue because at the end of this, we'll have 51 survivors. So he'll just be a freebie death. But if you can save him, save him. Go ahead and spray him. You can save him and get Mindy and Debbie in the closet behind him. The two people he was terrorizing. Uh, you're going to go ahead and grab Mindy and Debbie. And then once you grab Mindy and Debbie, you're going to go ahead and take them back to the bathroom where you will have them wait as you go and grab Leroy and Estelle's fine lady cosmetics. So go ahead and bring them back. And once you do, or once you get them over to the shortcut, you're going to come out to Estelle's fine lady cosmetics and grab Leroy. Leroy is chilling right in here. Grab him and you're going to want to bring him all the way back to the safe room. Along with the other survivors. So go ahead and take him through the shortcut. Take him to Paradise Plaza and to the warehouse. Grab all the survivors and bring them into paradise or into the security room where you will save them that is your very last large group the next one is your final survivor which is simone now you're gonna wait anywhere besides paradise plaza uh, until 12 p.m you'll get a call for simone she'll be in players which is right next to child's play that store where you got pamela and heather where the, the serve bot head is you're also gonna get a call for kindle's betrayal around this time so uh, make sure you take care of that when you save Simone, but do not enter and leave the safe room. Kindle will take a lot of your survivors with you, just like Ronald would. So anyway, go ahead and go to players. It's just right over here. And now this, you have to have Isabella to save her. If you don't have Isabella, you can't save her. So make sure you have Isabella. Um, she is, in fact, been. So Isabella will at least allow her to come back to the safe room with you, allowing for you to get another survivor out of the mall. Simone will go ahead and talk to you and you will go ahead and save her and when you save her this is your final survivor so once in she's following you we have no reason to have that other bar so let's get that out of here now let's go ahead and head right back to the warehouse with our final survivor we need to save pretty easy right next to there and now we're gonna go ahead and go to the elevator here and go up and return once you do add on Brad Add on Jesse and add on Otis. And you have 51 survivors. You did it. However, this will not stand if you do not take care of Kendall. So go ahead and do Kendall's betrayal. You'll just talk to him, talk him down, allow him to wait for the helicopter to come. Uh, if you do not take care of this, he will take a good chunk of your survivors out of the mall or out with him, and you'll never see them again. Your account will go down, and you will not get the achievement. While you have all 51 survivors, go ahead and take a picture of everyone in your safe room. This will allow you to get the census taker achievement. Very easy. Just make sure you get markers on all of them. You don't need them to be any fancy pit photos, no PP uh, markers. But once you get census taker, you're pretty much done. Just go ahead and finish up the achievement here. Just wait around. It, this is your time to just mess around and do whatever the hell you want. Because you are done with the achievement. Congratulations. You have just gotten one of the hardest achievements in this game. And once you get that achievement and you get census taker achievement, the only thing left is transmissionary. Because most likely you waited until the second to last achievement to get this one because it is a pain in the butt. But anyway, as you see on your screen right now, the only survivors we did not save is Barnaby and Tad. Tad, I know you can go through and do that. It's not that hard, but however, it's just extra time sensitive stuff we do not want to do. So in order to get the achievement, I would just say leave Tad out. Don't even bother with cut from the same cloth when that gets there. Barnaby would most likely be a good saving spot, but remember you have uh, three freebies. So if you use Tad as your freebie, you have to get the other ones. And you can use two more freebies too. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next guide. Bye-bye. Woo!